Hello YouTube, this is Goddard Radio Moscow here again with another beer review. Now I want to revisit a craft brewery from Chico, California that I actually really quite like. This is the Sierra Nevada Keller Vice for you today. Now I previously did a video review of the Sierra Nevada Pale Ale, so I'll put the link for that in the description and you can have a look at that if you're interested, but I will warn you that particular video doesn't have a very good video quality and the sound quality isn't too good either, but you can take a look at it and see, and see it if you like. But I'll take you through the history of this brewery again for those of you who are interested and this one will be a bit more in depth than the other one so if you're interested in the history stick with this video and if you're only simply interested in the tasting of the beer rather than the history feel free to fire forward uh, to the video just a few minutes before the end and you will catch the, the tasting session but for those of you who are actually interested in the history of the brewery let's get going with this now the company was founded back in 1979 in Chico, California when the founders Ken Grossman and Paul Camusi decided to expand their hobby into a brewery and their, the Sierra Nevada since then has actually grown to become one of the pioneering craft brewing companies in the United States. Now Ken Grossman uh, learned to homebrew at a very young age from the father of a close friend and this hooked him on the art of brewing from a very young age. Now in 1972 he went on a cycling trip with some friends in the northeast of California and he stopped in the town of Chico to visit some friends who were enrolled at the University of California there and there he fell in love with the town and the culture and he actually decided that he would relocate there and in 1976 Ken actually opened a home brewing supply shop in the town named the Home Brew simply named the Home Brew Shop and he and fellow home brewer Paul Camusi got deeper into their craft brewing now in the late 70s, uh, the choice of hops for brewers was rather poor and Grossman actually decided to take things into his own hands and he drove up to Yakima in Washington to buy hops himself and he fell particularly in love with the Cascade hop which is very prominent in Sierra Nevada brewing today. Now, and this, this was uh, actually the foundation stone of the hop forward beers that Sierra Nevada are now famous for, as I said. Now, in 1979, the pair founded a small scale brewery, uh, taking the name from Ken Grossman's love of hiking the nearby Sierra Nevada mountains. So, obviously, this is where the Sierra Nevada name comes from. But they created their first brewing equipment mainly out of recycled dairy equipment from dairy farms, and they actually made a lot of it themselves. Ken Grossman learned a lot about welding and things like that, but they finally completed their brewery in 1980. And Ken actually spent a lot of time and money ensuring that he could replicate the brewing process exactly and, and the same year the famous Sierra Nevada Pale Ale was born. Now in 1981 the pair brewed their first Celebration Ale which is actually considered by many American craft beer enthusiasts to be the benchmark of the American IPAs. Now in 1983 Sierra Nevada opened their portfolio with three different beers, the Pale Ale, the Porter and the Stout and they also produced the 10% Bigfoot Ale which is considered by many as being one of the first examples of extreme ABV brewing and it is now considered by many to be a cult classic and in 1984 they purchased a new 100 barrel copper kettle from Germany but at the time eh, they couldn't afford to install it for in their factory for another three years and in 1987 they actually purchased the plot on 20th street in Chico that would house the 100 barrel kettle and this location has been the the locate as the site of the brewery ever since and in 1989 they actually went on to open the doors to their now famous tap room on the site of the brewery where you can go and sample all the different Sierra Nevada brews so it's definitely worth a visit if you're in the Chico California area now the company produced their first wet harvest ale in 1993 and that same year they also hit the 100,000 barrel mark which is a very big milestone for a little craft brewery. Now the brewery further expanded in 1997 unveiling a new 200 barrel Hutman brew house with the coppersmiths who had done the original German kettle being called out of retirement to make these new 200 barrel kettles. It was quite cool so they, they maintained the sort of uh, continuity in their in their brewing equipment there. But um, Paul Camusi went on to retire in 1998 and he sold his share to Ken Grossman who's now obviously the 100% owner of this brewery. And uh, then after he sold his share to Ken Grossman they added a 350 seater auditorium to the brewery site in 2000 which hosts a variety of different uh, music events, different genres, you know, country, bluegrass, all of this kind of thing. But they also built a beer research lab to the exact scale dimensions of the, uh, the main brew house so they just scaled it down a little bit and the idea behind this was that they could develop new recipes and improve their current brews and for this reason they're actually considered one of the premier brewers in America in terms of the research 
research and development side of things and it was in fact finding in, findings in this lab that prompted them to switch from the twist off caps that you normally get to these pry off ones that you see now as this protected the beer better from oxidation so these guys were one of the, as you can see, they're very into their sort of science which is quite interesting for me being a chemist now in 2008 the brewery produced uh, an event beer, uh, an event called Beer Camp, sorry, where the restaurant and bar owners from the local community come to the brewery for a hands-on experience and this has become a very regular event. Now 2009 also saw the launch of their highly acclaimed Torpedo Extra IPA and I have a bottle of this and I will review it for you at a later date. I'm quite looking forward, I've heard good things about that one. But this year they also did a collaboration beer with Dogfish Head Craft Brewery called Life and Limb as a tribute to the craft brewing com uh, community rather. Now the company celebrated their 30th anniversary in 2010 and to celebrate they launched four collaboration beers each brewed with a different brewer who helped launch the craft uh, beer brewing renaissance and these brewers that were involved with this are Fritz Maytag, Jack McAuliffe, Charlie Papazian and Frederick, Fre Fred Eckhart I think it is? Fred Eckhart yeah and over the next few years they launched some other beers including the hot Hoptimium, which is a whole cone IPA, the Ruthless Rye, which is a, just a single IPA, and in 2012 they also announced plans to build a second brewery in Mills River in North Carolina to meet the growing demand for their beer. And interestingly, actually, the brewery is also completely powered by solar energy since 2007, and they also added some hydrogen fuel cells to power the brewery in, back in the year 2000. But they actually won the Green Business of the Year Award from the United States Environmental Protection Agency in 2010, and apparently 99 0.5% of their solid waste is diverted from uh, landfill and uh, they also use biodiesel to uh, to power their delivery trucks and they sell excess grain to local cattle ranchers to feed the cattle but they've interestingly one thing that's good about the continuity of this brewery is that they've also had the same head brewer since 1983 when they were producing 25 to 30 barrels a week which uh, accounted to around 1,300 to 1,500 barrels per year and now the production is 780,000 barrels per annum. So this is quite cool. You can see just from that how much this brewery has grown and like I say the complex history kind of shows you that they are really one of the premier craft brewers within the United States. But without further ado let's get on to the actual tasting of this beer. I'll just let you have a little look at the uh, the bottle art for this one. It's a typical kind of style for Sierra Nevada as you can see there. I'll just make sure the camera is focusing on that. You can see the Sierra Nevada background in there and there's always a little product description on the, the top of these beers. Now this one says Sierra Nevada Keller Vice is, a deeply com is deeply complex with flavours reminiscent of ripe banana and spicy clove. The hazy golden beer glows with suspended yeast creating a velvety texture. To serve pour two thirds into a glass and swirl and add the rest. Okay, we'll give that we'll give that a try. But anyway, for the for the style of this beer and for the hops and things like that, this is a four point eight half a 4.8% Hefeweizen Weiss beer, whatever you want to call it, but it's a Hefeweizen style beer and it uses perlite and sterling hops and two row pale wheat and Munich malts apparently. Oh and for those of you who are interested in the in the bottle cap, as you can see the bottle cap for Sierra Nevada ones are very simple, it just says Sierra Nevada, a fresh seal cap, used bottle opener. Nothing really interesting about the bottle cap I have to say. But anyway, let's get this guy open and get on with the tasting of this beer. I'm quite interested to try a different Sierra Nevada because, like I say, I've only ever had the uh, the pale ale from this one. So let's get this guy open. There's a nice bit of uh, smoke coming off this one just as I'm filming this. Anyway, let's get this guy out. I actually find it quite strange that an American company uses the... Uh, the um, the Keller Weiss name, the German name for this sort of beer, rather than just calling it a wheat ale. Many of the English speaking countries who have the craft breweries just simply call them a wheat ale. Now, as you can see, it's a beautiful kind of goldeny orangey straw colour, I would say. The head, actually, I thought the head would have more retention on this, as is typical of Sierra Nevada beers, but that's kind of dissipated quite quickly. As you can see, it's typical for a German. Keller beer, it's a German style beer rather than being a German beer of course it's very kind of hazy and that's the that's the meaning of the word Keller, in German it means cellar so it's unfiltered as you can see there is some, I'm not sure how you can see that on the camera there but there is some sedimentation on the bottom of that at all so let's just have a little smell of it and see what the aroma is like first thing that comes is it's quite citrusy and you actually am getting some of the, the banana in there you can smell just a little bit of the spice as well. 
But the cit it's mainly the, the citrusy notes and that are the, the main noticeable thing. But there's also a kind of doughiness or breadiness to it as well. That's the other thing that comes in the background. And there is just that little hint of spice that they talk about. I think there is, I heard that there was some coriander in this one, but I'm not sure. There's no real carbonation visible in that beer, actually. I forgot to mention that. Mainly some sedimentation, and as you can see, the head is completely dissipated now. But let's give it a taste and see what he's like. Now the first thing, first thing that's coming is the citrusy one. This one actually has quite a wet feel to it again. But yeah, the first thing that's coming is the sweet sort of citrusy notes and then you're getting the bready doughy flavours just right after the sweetness kind of dissipates I would say. There is a little bit of the spice in there, it's not too noticeable I would say. And there is a little bit of, just a little bit of a bite when you initially take it in from the wheat as well. It's different from sort of normal G uh, German Hefeweizens because it's a lot lighter I would say. Like I say it has a very very mou uh, wet mouth feel to it. It's actually surprisingly light bodied for a Hefeweizen. I would always describe a, a stronger Hefeweizen, a, a good Hefeweizen as being a sort of medium bodied beer but this one is actually quite um, quite light bodied in that way. It's actually got a really nice aftertaste to it. A lot of the thing that's sticking with this one is just that little bit of spice and a li the, li the doughy flavour that I was talking about. The citrus is minorly present. It's almost a bit of a banana-y dough flavour that I'm getting on the aftertaste from this one. But yeah, tasting it again, like I say, you get the sweet citrusy notes with that bready doughy flavour in the background. Just the hint of spice. A little, just a little hint of a bite from the uh, from the sort of from the hops in the background there. It's not too hoppy this one actually. I would say it's more a doughy kind of flavoured beer, which I'm surprised at for Sierra Nevada. Um, but as I say, it's light bodied. It's very very smooth. It's actually a very very refreshing beer. This is one of the things you could sit and drink all day. The other Sierra Nevadas I've had, I would say that um, they are more sort of tasting beers. They're quite sort of. Uh, what's the word, kind of prompt, like not prompt, uh, they're very kind of uh, pungent if you like, you can only really drink one at a time in my opinion, but this one's a very very good session beer which I'm finding quite unusual for Sierra Nevada in that way, but it's really really good, I do like this beer, um, if I wanted a very light Hefeweizen for a kind of summer day, I would definitely pick out this one if I, wa if I didn't have German ones available of course, but anyway, um, I would just say this is a really nice beer, definitely give it a check out. Sierra Nevadas are reasonably priced in the UK and obviously they're available quite widely abroad. This one actually is, is harder to get in the UK, you're more likely to find the Torpedo and the, the Paleo but if you see this one in any of the specialist beer, uh, beer shops be sure to give it a try. It's unusual in that sense with the Hefeweizen in that it's more of a, a doughy flavour than a kind of spicy hoppy flavour I would say, but that's just me, I mean beer's relative, uh, you might like thing, some things better than me and I might like some things better than you, you know, everyone has their own taste. But anyway, thanks again for watching my uh, beer reviews, I'll be back soon with another one, I'm not quite sure uh, what, uh, what one I'll do next, I've got quite a lot of beer sitting there that I need to have a wee think about and uh, visit some other countries, but I've got some very random ones for you, so keep, please subscribe to the channel and, uh, and you'll get to see these at some stage, but please let me know as well in the comment section what you actually think of this beer and indeed suggest some American craft breweries for me to look into. We obviously only get a limited kind of uh, selection here in Scotland but I'm always open to trying new beers and things like that. But anyway, thanks again for watching. Like, subscribe, share the channel, all the usual YouTube jazz and I shall catch you soon. Cheers.